How y'all doing this morning? Good. I'm going to bring the word before you uh, very briefly this morning. I'm beginning uh, scripture reading is Mark chapter 5. Reading from the NLT, reading verses 33 through 42. And it reads, Then the frightened woman trembled at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, Your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead, she's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave. And he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha Koum, which means little girl, get up. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. I want to speak to you this morning from a topic of the topic of a healing faith. A healing faith. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you, God, for this opportunity to enter into your house once again, and this opportunity to speak to these, your people. God, I ask that you, God, would guide my words, guide my lips this morning, God, that you would speak through me. These are your words. I'm simply the vessel that is being used at the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First of all, giving honor to our bishop in his absence uh, this morning. He is taking some uh, much needed vacation. Praise the Lord. So um, while he's away, we're going to stay in this series uh, dealing with faith, dealing with faith, um, a healing faith, a healing faith. Notice that I didn't say the faith to heal. I'm talking about a healing faith, meaning your faith is what's going to heal you. All right, as, as believers, uh, I believe we often tread a thin line, not between love and hate. Uh, we tread a thin line between desperation and faith. Uh, 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 many of us, many of our decisions and moves are made out of desperation, not necessarily faith. Uh, uh, we come to God like this woman with the issue of blood. We know her story, 12 years of bleeding, tried everything she could, exhausted every dime she had, and heard Jesus was passing by. So she decided, I'm going to press my way. I'm going to press my way to the master. Um, and if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I don't even need him to speak to me. I don't need him to touch me. I'm going to reach out to him. I'm going to touch something that's touching him. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed, right? So many of us are like this woman where we try everything else and then we come to Jesus. Then we turn to God. Uh, um, we, we fail to do as Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. But instead we seem to direct our own path. And then we come to Jesus to redirect us or fix the mess that we done made. Um, I, I, learned, I learned a few things about faith. Faith causes you to do three things uh, uh, mainly. It causes you to move different. It causes you to speak different. And it causes you to think different. What are you saying? I'm saying that the faith, the woman's faith, I'm not, her faith healed her. But that's, that wasn't the start to her healing. 
the start of her healing began with Jairus' faith. Jairus left the synagogue, met Jesus at the lake. He was getting off the boat. Jairus met him on the other side of the lake and said, my daughter is sick and I need you to come and heal my daughter. So what happens if Jairus doesn't get to the lake? Does Jesus ever pass by the way of the woman with the issue of blood? Her faith, her ability to press healed her, but the process started with Jairus. The process started because a synagogue leader, a dignitary, high and mighty, he decided to think different, he decided to move different, and he decided to speak different. He told Jesus, if you come to my daughter's house, I know you can heal her. I know you can heal her, right? So Jairus, he, he meets Jesus at the lake. He, he sends, asks Jesus to come, come his way, come to, to, to his daughter's house, uh, come to his house to heal his daughter. And Jesus stops and because he's touched. Who touched me? What kind of question is that? All these people around here, anybody could touch you. And Jesus said, no. I felt virtue leave my body. Some, somebody touched me. My question to you is, who's waiting on you to go to the lake? Who's waiting on you to meet Jesus at the lake? Oftentimes we think our faith is only for us, but our faith is for those connected to us. Our faith can really touch, heal everybody in our vicinity, right? If we only have faith. So, when I think about faith, when I think about healing faith, how, how do I get to experience this healing faith where my faith will heal me? How, how, how in the world do I get there? The first thing you have to do is you must stay focused on Jesus. So when we read in verse 36, um, it says, Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, just have faith. Understand that Jairus could have been disappointed in Jesus. He could have lost faith. I'm sure his mind started to wonder because you, I summoned you. You stopped to heal this woman, and now they're telling me my daughter did. So it's very easy for your mind to shift. But Jesus had to speak up. Because he had to let Jairus know, I need you to stay focused. I need you to stay, as my kids, I need you to stay locked in. I need you to be locked in right now because these people have no clue what's going on. They're simply, they're, they're a crowd. They're Boston. They, they want to see a miracle. And I know I took a pause. I didn't stop. I took a pause. Because this pause is going to increase your faith. Because if you can heal somebody who didn't even summon you, I know when you make it to my house, you're going to do what, you, what I ask you to do. So we have to stay focused. on. A lot of times we have to stay focused on Jesus because a lot of times the distractions around us can make us lose our course. It can make us doubt. It can make us uh, weary in well-doing. It can make us feel like he's forgotten about us. I'm, when I was studying God, God brought something to my attention. There's two areas uh, that the church struggles with in faith. We struggle with anything dealing with our money, and we struggle with grief. If you want to see why people are absent from church, it's usually something to do with their money or their grieving. And God is saying, if you just have faith, I can heal all of that. I can heal all of that. I was speaking to someone uh, this week, and, 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 and it was a very sensitive um, subject. I asked him, I said, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Nah. Are you okay for real? Like, not this facade that you put on. But are you okay for real? Well, not really. But what's wrong? I just keep myself busy because I feel like if I face this grief, I'm a break. 
So my question to them was, so what you're telling me is that you don't have faith that God will put you back together. Or what you're telling me is you don't have faith that God would uphold you with his right hand. Is, so that's what you're saying? Well, well I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I'm going to break. I said you're breaking every day. And a lot of times, even with our finances, we, we're so afraid of the big crumble that we don't realize it's chipping away at us every day. So we're, we're afraid to fall apart, and we're falling apart. It's just not one big fall, it's slowly. So by the time you realize you're falling apart, you done fell apart. And what God is saying is, I want your initial reaction to be, God, I trust you. So I can face this thing. I can stand in front of it. Because my Bible tells me that if God be for me, who can be against me? So in your faith, in order to have a faith that can heal, in order to have a faith that will cause the healing process to take place, you have to stay focused on Jesus. The second thing you have to do is you have to embrace separation. You have to embrace separation. Uh, the crowd laughed. It's verse 40 says the crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave. He made everybody that wasn't on the same page leave. We know the famous saying, misery loves, come, get, a, get from around me with that. Sometimes we stay in our misery because we won't leave. Because we don't have nobody to speak life into what we're going through. But we stay comforted because everybody feeling how we feel. That's a dangerous place to be. Because the longer you sit in that thing, the stronger the grip of it gets. I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I know. The longer you sit in that thing, the stronger the stronghold becomes. So you have to embrace the separation. It says the crowd laughed at him. And he made them leave. And he, he took the girl's father and the mother and three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Now, I never read, never looked into the, the girl's mother was there, right? It is, uh, Jairus' faith was big. It had to be big. Because you mean to tell me you're going to tell this woman who daughter sick that you're going to late to get somebody to come hear her? Sir, why we ain't going to the doctor? My baby is sick. And you're going to the lake? This man, tired. he just performed another miracle. He just went back. You're going to the lake? So you're going to leave me and my baby here to go to the lake? What kind of faith do you have to have to know that I'm going to leave you here, but it won't be eternal? I'm going to leave you here because I'm going to get something that's going to make you feel better. My faith is going to heal you and my baby. So when he gets back to the house, <laughs> he invites the mother, the father, and only three. Why only three disciples? Why? Why only three? Could it be because the other ones wouldn't doubt? The other ones wouldn't believe? We talked about last month um, in James 1 where it says um, when, you, when, you, when you ask him, you must completely believe. I believe he took those who would completely believe. Whether they was believing out of faith or they was believing because they ain't had no other choice. But I believe. Right? So the separation in this season of where we are, we have to have those who completely believe right because if the Bible says if you doubt you shouldn't expect anything he sent the crowd away because they was laughing they had commotion they was mourning and he asked them like Why, what's all this for she just sleep that was, that was gibberish to them that was foreign to them 
You telling me she sleep? I see she dead. What you mean she sleep? She, there's no life in her body. But those that went in the room know that they brought the one who is the giver of all life. So you have to embrace the separation. And that's the next thing you have to do is respond to the call. Verse 42 says, and the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. What's your response to the call? Are you here I am like, the, like Abraham? Are you immediately getting up like this 12-year-old girl? Or are you saying, Lord, you, sh you show? Lord, listen, um, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I, you saying get up. You saying get up, but how can I get up? This thing is heavy. This thing hurt. Nobody understand it. I feel like I'm alone, even in a room full of people. How can I get up? But it says that in the previous verse, it says he was holding her hand. Are you accepting the hand that's extended to you? She didn't have a choice because she was asleep. But do you see his hand? And everything that's going around you has it clouded the fact that his hand is out. Better yet, has it clouded the fact that his hand is on you? Can you see his hand? Can you put your other feelings to the side and feel his touch? Can you feel the warmth of the embrace of the Savior? He's right there. He's right there. A lot of times this, our, faith, um, our faith wavers because we put everything in, the, in our sight, right? We're driving on a crowded highway. And we can't see nothing. And Jesus is saying, I know the highway is crowded, but I have a road map that will tell you how to get around every detour. It'll tell you every alternate route. It'll tell you how long you're going to sit in this. It'll tell you what turn to make next. But all I can focus on is this traffic. I'm stuck at a standstill. And Lord, it shouldn't take this long. Says who? My Bible says, after you have suffered a little while. We struggle with that faith because somebody told us faith means everything going to be sunny and everything going to be good. But if you just look at the GPS... It'll tell you how long you're going to be in that traffic. How long, Lord, after you suffered a little while? Well, what's a little while? Psh, it depends. How long it take you to sit here? How long it take you to reach out and really grab my hand? How long does it take you to speak initially to, to your situation? How long does Jesus, God really wants our initial reaction to change. We face certain stuff because our initial reaction is wrong. We don't immediately go into, all right, Lord, whatever you want to do, I'm here. What am I to learn? What do you want to do? What is it that you're trying to do with me? We go to, oh, God, here goes something else. I can't believe this. I don't know if I'm better to make it out of this. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. How you, the GPS right there. Look at the map. Look, listen to the lady talking to you. But y'all know we know how to get everywhere fast. GPS said it's going to take 45 minutes, but I believe if I take this shortcut, I can get there in 30. How? How you going to get there in 30? You going to speed and risk a ticket and an accident. I'm going to beat the GPS. Okay. Go ahead. 
and y'all uses beating the GPS. Unless you're traveling long distance and the cops are kind and not out, you ain't beating the GPS but maybe two minutes. You might beat it by two minutes. But them two minutes come with a whole bunch of risks that we ignore because we don't want to follow instructions. And all God is saying, I want to stay focused on the GPS. Follow this. If I, when I follow it, whether I get there late or not, I'm on time. I'm there when God want me to get there. We try to rush the process. We try to rush God and stuff. And he's saying, listen, you can do it your way and come back to the GPS anyway or you can follow the GPS not only will you cut this time down but I'm going to give you some peace while you're doing it because when you follow the instructions of God you don't have to worry because God I'm doing what you told me to do so anything that comes you have to already have taken care of it You've already mapped out the journey. I believe that Jairus took solace in the fact when Jesus spoke to him and said, don't worry, only have faith. Because it reminded Jairus that I know you took a pause, but you're still attentive to my need. And I think we get messed up because we go through seasons where we feel like Jesus is, God is telling us to wait as if he's forgotten about our needs. And the whole time, all Jesus is doing is saying, I'm going to show you before I get to your situation that I can do what you're asking me to do. Your daughter ain't been sick that long. This lady been sick for 12 years. She done tried everything that society said should work. And then she didn't even speak to me she didn't even have my attention she didn't even ask for my she didn't want my attention the only thing she desired was to touch not me not my flesh she desired to touch something that was connected to me so if I can heal her through my robe of course I can heal your daughter with my hand and so y'all we have to we have to really be be confident we have to really be uh, 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 locked in with God because when you locked in as, as my daughter say she, this child this child went to Win dixon anybody know how Win dixon where you put your phone number in boom 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 this child now we selling plates so every dime count praise the lord this child went and spent $26 on a family pack of chicken wings because she didn't use the phone number. Using the phone number would have made the chicken wings $11. So she took our profit margin from $30 to $5 because she wasn't locked in. And when we asked, we said, why you ain't put the phone number in? Oh, I, I wasn't locked in. And her mama was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, baby, she just saying she wasn't focused. She wasn't, she wasn't paying attention. She wasn't completely sold. Probably was. But a lot of us, my daughter, when it come to God, we... we give away so much of us whether it be time energy emotions because we not locked in when i listen when you locked in man please i don't care what come what go y'all ever play uh what's that the red rover red rover sent such and such right over when you really locked in let them come running across that if they want to they will close line and hurt the only way they get through is because they ain't locked in tight. And the enemy saying, all right, I'm going to play Red Rover with you. Let me see if you're really holding on tight to God. 
let me see if you really holding on tight to God. Yeah. And when that, especially a big person, Lord Jesus, they run into you, oh, this is going to hurt. But y'all still locked. It didn't break. A lot of times we break because we ain't locked in. And we ain't locked in because we feel like God forgot about us. We feel like he's taking too long. He ain't moving at our pace as if we control anything anyway. Y'all ever learned that about God? Like, I don't control nothing with you for real. I just be tricking myself. But when you locked in with God for real, your faith will start your healing process. How does my faith, how does my faith start my healing process? Because when I'm locked in and I have faith, I think about it different. I talk about it different and I move different in it. So many of the sufferings that I would normally face when I got faith for real, I'm straight. I may get a little bruise, but I ain't breaking. It may hurt a little bit, but I ain't dying. It may be uncomfortable, but I'm still walking in it. And we still walking anyway. Sometimes we're just walking with unnecessary pain. Imagine if when you first roll that ankle, you keep it taped up. You may be talking about, and keep it elevated like they tell you. Maybe talk about two days, and you back good. But when you still try to walk on it, still try to play on it, you talking about a week, two weeks. If you do too much, you might got to go to the doctor. I was in the seventh grade, playing football, got hurt, and my daddy was real cheap. Um, told my dad, I said, Pops, my hip is hurting. Like, y'all, I'm, I'm literally walking with a limp. I'm like, my, my hip is hurting. Oh, it's just bruised. It's just bruised. Okay, well, you know, I know it hurt. I'm on 12 years old. You might know a little bit more than me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, Okay, so y'all, yeah, I walked on that hip for a month and a half. Kept playing football, everything. So I'm going to school one day late. Jump, put on my clothes, jumping, jumping on a bike, tuck my shoestrings inside the shoe because you know it wasn't cool to tie your shoes back then. Um, I couldn't really loosen them up to make the shoestrings hang, so I just tucked them in, tucked them in, tucked them in. So I'm coming down the hill, almost to the school car comes, so I go to slam on brakes, go to get off my bike, and realize my shoe strainer came out, and it's wrapped around the pedal. So now, this car coming, I swerve, so I can't get back to the right, because the car right there. I done stopped. So I'm literally like, oh God. Boom. Hit my hip on the side of the curb. So, so I called my daddy, y'all. I called my daddy. <laughs> well, my best friend called my daddy, Adam. Because I, get, I went to stand up and stepped down and my leg gave. So I said, man, I said, I can't move. So my best friend, he was white, y'all. He, he acted a little different. Um... <laughs> This man was jumping fences, knocking on doors. I said, Lord, you, you send me a friend like this? I thought about all my other friends. I'm like, man, they couldn't have been with me right now. I, we'll still be laying here. So he, he called, my, he called uh, my daddy. He asked my daddy, you want, you want me to call the ambulance? So yeah, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. Ambulance get there. They checking me out. I'm thinking I'm about to get in the ambulance. Lo and behold, my daddy pull up. So, boom. I think I'm like, okay, there's no way this man is not going to let me get an ambulance. And so they tried to tell him that, you know, I need to go to the hospital to go get checked out. He's like, nah, he all right? I was like, sir, sir, this boy is not all right. We're going we to take him. No, nah, you ain't going to take him there. I'm going to take him to the hospital. Y'all, my daddy had me on the back of that pickup truck with a book bag under my head. 
We going over speed bumps. I'm, oh, oh, I'm yelling, screaming, right? We get to the hospital. We go in there, do the x-ray. The lady come back. She said, I'm glad you came now. She said, your hip is dislocated. And so my mom, by this time, she there. It's over with now. Whatever my dad was thinking, is over with. Uh, so my mom says, well, the curb, this, because it was, my hip was out of socket like this. So my mom said, the curb did that? The doctor said, no. It had to have been dislocated previously. And said, had you come when it first got dislocated, it would have been a quick pop back in and go. Now, because it's so far, you're going to have surgery. We're going to pop it back in, and we have to put a screw in it. Because now it damaged some ligaments around it. Y'all, if my daddy would have let me go to the hospital the first time, I wouldn't have a screw in my hip today. And when the weather get bad, I thought the old people was lying about it. Man, my hip go to acting up. I said, Jesus. But I said all that to say is, sometimes if we locked into the plan, we don't need a screw. It'll be a simple boop and keep going. So I want to encourage you today, activate a healing faith. Let your initial reaction be, okay, God, what we doing now? Let that be the first thing you say. Let the first person you turn to be God, not people who other people who don't have some. Y'all, we be venting just because just we want to get off our chest. You can't, if you could help me, I don't believe I'd be in it this long. So let me not even, let me talk to you through the healing process, but my first conversation gonna be with the one who can help me and get instructions on how to get the help. So I wanna encourage this one, let's activate our healing faith. How do we do that? We gotta stay focused on Jesus. We have to embrace the separation. And then we have to respond when he calls. Amen. Amen, amen. A healing faith, a healing faith. Amen. We thank God for the word that we heard this morning. Thank you, Pastor Barnes, for allowing God to speak to us this morning through you. It is offering time. Amen. This is a part of the service where we get to bless ourselves by obeying the word. This is a part of the roadmap, a part of the roadmap that Pastor Barnes told us that the Lord left us some instructions, and the only thing we have to do is obey. Amen. Our ways of giving are on the screen. I'm going to encourage you all to make sure you're paying your tithe. Understand that our tithe and our offering is what allows us to continue to do ministry. Amen. So uh, you're able to give through Cash App. You're also able uh, to give in PushPay um, on the through the church app as well. And I want to um, ask everyone, if you can, you're paying your tithe this morning. And I'm going to ask everyone, challenge you this morning to give a $50 seed. Amen. My husband and I are going to sow a $50 seed in service today. I'm using his money. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask if you have that $50 seed to stand with us this morning. And even if you don't have the $50 seed, find yourself giving something this morning. Amen. If you have cash or need an envelope. Our deacons have envelopes. Thank you, Jermaine. Um, they have envelopes. If you need an envelope, just wave your hand. They'll give an envelope this morning. I want you to raise your seeds in the air and say, Seed, you must be my seed because you are absolutely too small to be my harvest. Now put a command on your seed. Say, Seed, I command you now to go and to grow and to bring back many friends. 
It is so. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you, God, for a chance and an opportunity to bless ourselves through obedience. We ask now, God, that you would increase our seeds, multiply them. We thank you on today, God, even for those who were not able to make it here but still sowed in their absence. We ask, God, that you would increase and multiply our seeds. We thank you now, God, that you are causing us to live in a season of overflow, understanding that all we have to do is be obedient and everything will need to be added to us. We thank you, Lord God, for these and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can remain standing. We have just a couple of announcements. Um, next Sunday is Father's Day. So we are very excited to celebrate our fathers. We are not having traditional service on next week. We are asking for 